Pam the Piggy Bank from Toy Story, P.T. Flea from A Bug's Life, and Yeti in Monsters University. These are just a few of the lovable characters created by the actor who's best known as Cliff the Mailman from Cheers. Emmy-nominated actor John Ratzenberger has performed on stage, film, and television. He's also worked behind the scenes as a producer and director. And for 20 years, he's entertained audiences with his vocal talents in the animated Pixar films. Most recently, Monsters University. All right, newbies, quit goofing around. I'll have you know tampering with the mail is a crime punishable by banishment. Yes, sir. We're right on it, Mr. Snowman. He even has his own TV show, John Ratzenberger's American Maid. And please welcome to the 700 Club for the very first time, John Ratzenberger. Great to meet you. Wendy, thank you. You're like thank a you. legend. You're a legend from Cheers, right? Yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, 11 years I got paid to sit at a bar and crack jokes. That is amazing. Now, of course, most people know you from that character on Cheers, but right. most people don't know how you got that role. Well, no, I, I would just, uh, I went in simply as an audition, and uh, I made up the character during the audition. Seriously. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. And they liked it. Yeah, and they and they went for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, um, so they said we'd like to try that character out for uh, a few episodes. Okay. Now you are the only actor to have ever to have been in every Pixar film. Correct. Who's your favorite character? Uh, Hammy and uh, P.T. Flea is a close second. Mm. Who else do you like? Um, so the Yeti. It's always fun. Yeah. And uh, are you talking about my characters or anyone's? Your characters. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that'd be it. Yeah. Now, something else people may not know about you, John, is that your faith is a key part of everything you do. Tell us about your faith and why that is important to you. Well, my, my, my faith is, is really comes from a historical aspect of it because I traveled quite extensively as, as a young man. I was 19, 20. But I went to Europe, and I lived there 10 years, and I traveled all over the world. And I realized, first of all, how much I loved America. And then I realized that America is America because of its ethic. And the ethic is the Judeo-Christian ethic. Mm. And because of that faith, because of that ethic, it's the, only, it's the only philosophy of let's take care of each other. It's I'll take care of you, you take right. care of me, let's... Let's make sure everything is, 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 is done in the right way. And the standard is always very high. And because this is our standard, and, and your job is to meet that standard. We, we don't right. traditionally lower the standard to meet you. Ten years in Europe. Yeah. Were you, like, backpacking? Were you working over there? Were you acting? I was a carpenter. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was a carpenter. I was a house framer. And uh, I went to visit a friend. I was just going to be there for two weeks. And I ended up staying ten years. Well, yeah. how, how old were you when you got into acting? Uh, early 20s, okay. I guess, yeah, 21, 22, but then I was still doing carpentry and this and that and uh, swinging a hammer, pounding some nails. <laughs> and, uh, but, but it was over there I realized that the world is relatively at peace because of America's strength, and that's where our strength comes from. Yeah. It's our faith. Well, let's talk about what's happening in Hollywood right now. It seems that they are discovering a market that's always been there, and that's faith-based films. <clears throat> are, are you seeing that as well? Right. I'm, when you think of it, everything before the 60s was a faith-based film <laughs> because you, there was no question of good or evil. Yeah. This is good and this is evil. And then the 60s, and I feel responsible for it because I was a carpenter, <laughs> I, I, helped, I helped build the stage at Woodstock. Okay. <clears throat> and if I hadn't done so well, maybe it would have collapsed and, <laughs> and we, we wouldn't have had this problem. Uh, that but, makes perfect sense to me. But since the 60s, which, there's a confusion of well, who do we root for? Is this, geez, these are bad people, but geez, they have a puppy. Yeah. And, and I am not sure who, I, and so children growing up in that, it's confusing. Yeah. It really is confusing. Now, The Godfather is a perfect example. Uh, great film. I mean, the writing, the light, the editing, the acting, unbelievable. Yeah. But That's these are bad guys. Something, I want to change gears real quick. <clears throat> people don't know this about you, mm -hmm. or a lot of people, that you are so passionate, of course, about America, as you said, but about American-made products. Why right. so passionate about that? Well, that is the real, that also is the strength of America. 
uh, you know, manufacturing is to America what spinach is to Popeye. <laughs> it's our strength. Flat out, that's our strength. Mm. We have to make things. But also, we used to be a country of self-reliant people. As individuals, we were self-reliant. Regardless of your job, you could be a, a pastor, you could be an attorney, could be a stockbroker, but you still had other skills. Right. You could still change your car tire, mend your roof, do some gardening, knew about horses, something, or farming. But that's all changed. So we've gone from being a self-reliant country to a self-deluded country, mm -hmm. and that we sort of assume someone else is going to take care of this problem for us. Well, tell us about your new TV series, John. You must be excited right. about this. John Ratzenberger, American Made. All right. John Ratzenberger is American Made. We hope to go on the air by September. And right now, we're shopping the show around to different networks. Right. You're, we've got some clips of it right now. You don't have right. full episodes yet, but you're in the process. Right. What's, do, what's it about? Well, it's to, it's to celebrate people who actually get up and uh, do something useful mm -hmm. with their lives. And because none of us can do what we do, including us sitting here without someone else first putting a nut and a bolt together. Right. Someone has to actually have the skills to weld, to fix a bridge, to lay a water line, to right. know how electricity functions. I always say it takes a village to get me out here, and the hair and the makeup and the clothing, you know. It's the infrastructure. <laughs> Without the infrastructure, we're a third world country. Right, right. Well, you must be so excited about this. Well, um, what other projects do you have in the works right now, John? Let's see, right now I'm uh, uh, actually on the way to New, New Orleans uh, to work on a project. I'm, I do shows like uh, Drop Dead Diva. I'll be doing that at the end of uh, March, I believe. Um, and then when I go to Los Angeles, I've got some writing projects uh, going on. And then, you know, I do other sitcoms and guest stars. And Is it gratifying when you turn on the TV and you still see the Cheers reruns and you see yourself? I'm assuming they're still rerunning. I yeah, all over the world, different languages. Yeah. It's fun to watch Cheers in Urdu. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is kind of a universal kind of story, you know, the neighborhood bar, right. and everybody knows your name, and it, it, it is such a classic, and it's going to live forever. Um, would you say that that, I mean, are you having more fun now, or was that sort of the most fun you ever had when you were on Cheers? You know, it was even before Cheers, when I was touring Europe doing my own shows with a partner. Really? Um, yeah, we, we used to do a comedy show. Uh, the fellow's name is Ray Hassett. Uh, he uh, uh, lives up in New England now. But we would do these comedy shows where we'd each do 12 or 15 characters apiece, and we never knew the story. We knew the beginning, the middle, and the end, right. but we never knew how we were going to get there. And every night it changed. So, and, and being on stage and really not knowing what you're supposed to be doing... And that was the biggest challenge, but it's also the most gratifying, most fun. Well, John, thanks for sharing your humor and your comedic skills with all of us and for all the Pixar movies and now helping us care more about America. You're doing so, wearing so many hats. And John's latest movie, Monsters University, got it right here, uh, right. Is, is now available on DVD. You can also watch our web-exclusive interview with John. Just go to CBN.com and click in the green room link. John, great to have you on the show. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much.